Hey yo, Chris Mystery Cleaning, Cleaning Windows of the Foul Coast. What a week. What a week. So, I was hesitant about putting this video up. Um, it's, it's kind of more related to business as a whole than window cleaning, which is my niche. But I think it just needs it just needs saying. What is currently going on in this country is we have a situation where <laughs> the government is basically putting in additional COVID restrictions, etc. Based on evidence which is shaky at best, you know, and it has an impact on every single one of us, not just business owners. You know, this has an impact on every man, woman and child in this country. Now, I am aware it's a divisive issue. I get it, right? And not everybody on here or in general is going to agree with me. Um, but we've got a situation here where bringing in COVID passports and you know, new restrictions based on this new Omicron variant, right? It's a joke. It's, it's, now, it's now beyond a joke now. You've got MPs, you know, voting for measures which impact on everyone. And they're, you know, and they seem to have this sort of, you know, direct freaking you know, uh, one-sided, blinkered approach to, to uh, cases, etc., and all this sort of stuff of Omicron. And then you've got, on the other side of the, the aisle, you've got a Labour Party, which really, its roots were in supporting working people, right? And I'm not a Labour supporter. I'm not generally, to be fair, I am not a card-carrying member of any political party. I vote where my interests lie okay um, as everybody should okay you've got a, a situation where labor who traditionally you know support working people have rubber stamped measures which penalize businesses at a time of year where most businesses make the most of their money you know in january there are businesses that will have VAT um, tax, value-added tax, um, to pay. And traditionally, it's not been a problem. Why? Because Christmas and the New Year, bank holidays, etc., and all that sort of jazz, are traditionally the highest trading uh, time of the year. You know, but now we've seen people cancelling parties, we've seen ca cancelling events and all this sort of stuff, Right? And the argument I hear from from people on the other side of the argument is, oh, well, you know, they, they have a choice. They're not, they're not banning parties. No, they're not. But I'll tell you what they are doing. They're saying to people that if you test positive for COVID over Christmas, you, 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 you run the risk of being locked down over Christmas and not seeing your loved ones. So what are you going to do? You know, you, you cancel all these dues and all these parties and all this sort of stuff. Um... You know, because you don't want to spend ten day, that ten day block being locked down potentially over over Christmas. You know, and you know the argument might stand if if every single case involved a fatality, or even if half of all the cases involved a fatality, but they don't. <laughs> this is it's barking, it's barking. You've got a situation where. I believe so far, there's only one known death, one, from Omicron, one death, you know, and in the vast majority of cases, according to the people that discovered this variant, it's not, you know, it is, you know, extremely mild in, you know, in comparison to the Delta variant, and the vast majority of people are not even hospitalised. So that side of the argument's been, you know, been sort of blown out of the water by the people that discovered it. And you've got a situation now where Labour, honest to God, you know, Keir Starmer has got more balls than a school than a school roof. He really has. He's come out now 
his party have come out and said now that, you know, oh, well, you know, the government needs to now, you know, put its arms around business and support businesses. And these are the clowns that voted for these measures in the first freaking place. I am not normally one to go and spout my political views all over social media. Because generally speaking, it's, it's a waste of breath. But I, I feel the need to vent because... Because the government, right, the people that lose their businesses and the people that lose their jobs, yeah, you're a freaking number. You're a, you don't even feature in their day to day. Oh well, you're not. You, you don't. You, you don't matter. And it's, I can name, I can physically name a dozen, a dozen people that have lost their businesses. I can go on to name another half dozen people. They're about to lose their home. And they're not statistics. I know the names of their children. I know where these children go to school. I know the names of these people's businesses. I know how successful they were prior to this bullshit, quite frankly. And the result that's come from government, inter you know, from government interfering... I also happen to know, and again, I'd, I know of, of one person who was, you know, I served with him in the Army Reserve, a guy called Dean, he was 31 years old, and he died of stage 4 cancer during the first sort of lockdown, because COVID, you know, COVID took priority over people, over cancer patients. He was 31. He is not the only person that has lost their life because of this. I mean, shocking is what it is. And for those MPs that voted in favour of these measures, I can only hope that it came from a place of absolute freaking ignorance. And that you don't w actually wish to see businesses go to the wall because that's what you voted for. For those that voted against these measures, I salute you. Because every single one of them, I watched the debate, all right, and every single one of those people that voted, voted with the interests of the people, uh, of the people that run businesses, of the people that work in businesses. I salute you. And the people, right, that abstained, that abstained from this vote. That is to say, they didn't vote one way or the other. You were the worst of all. Because, <laughs> you know, the, the famous saying that goes, in order for evil men to succeed, all it takes is for good men to do nothing. Yeah? Well, you did nothing. You did absolutely nothing. And you are now willfully watching your country go down the freaking toilet. My MP, Ben Wallace, you are an absolute joke of a human being. This guy sits on the cabinet. He's the defence secretary. He sits on the cabinet. He is in the room with Boris, with all those other freaking, you know, cronies, deciding the fates of yours and my, your, your, my, your life and mine, right? This guy is a veteran. He used to be an officer in the British Army. And I have written to this clown in an effort to sort of, you know, in an effort to sort of shape an opinion at the table. I am, I am, you know, I am nothing. I am, I am a constituent. I am another number, just like you. I am another number. I, I mean nothing to this absolute clown, right? And I am not alone in, you know, I know of other people in my area that have written to him uh, and at best they get a mealy mouth sort of default sort of um, reply, you know, a cut and paste response. But usually you just get freaking ignored. It, it, it's, it, we're now in a situation, boys and girls, where 
Now, the bringing in sort of COVID passes. COVID passes. To go to watch a football match, you now have to have a COVID pass. To go and do to go to a uh, a venue seated with more than um, a certain number of people, you need a COVID pass. And the government will fine companies and business owners that don't abide by these rules. They will, you know, with heavy fines, right? Okay. And I, I, I can only, I can only say that this is not VC France, uh, Fran, v, VC Fran, France. Okay. This is not 1941. You know, where the Germans would quite happily walk around Paris demanding people's papers, produce your papers, and if you don't produce your papers, you run the risk of being shot as a spy. You know what I mean? Is that really the direction of travel this country is going in? I despair. I absolutely despair. Bringing it back in to my sort of macro level, how has this really affected my business? In the grand scheme, I'll be completely honest, right, okay, I run a small and agile business. We can adapt pretty, pretty, you know, pretty sharpish, right? When stuff goes wrong, okay, we're in a, we're, we're in a privileged position. We don't hold property. We don't, you know, other than the vehicles, okay? I don't hold property. Uh, I even rent my own home, okay? I have one full-time employee, and he is the only person I am liable to actually pass work to. I'm contractually obliged to pass him work. Worst case scenario... My contractors, you know, they can wait um, for work. They don't, you know, I don't necessarily, I'm not legally obliged to pass them work, okay? So if the shit really does hit the fan, okay, and if I do end up in a razor wire canoe, up shit creek in a razor wire canoe, I can adapt, I can overcome, okay? But there are people who own shops who are being, quite frankly, bummed through the eyes by this government and the opposition, who provide absolutely no opposition whatsoever. I've seen more backbone in a freaking jellyfish than I have in any politician other than the ones that actually cast their vote against these measures. I'm, I'm stunned. I'm stunned. The, the numbers of people I've, I will, that will lose their jobs as a result of this, we have not even seen the tip of this yet. But I can tell you something for nothing, right? These measures were put through, through Parliament, with very little in the way of evidence. There was no facts, there was no figures, other than, oh, well, this case doubles every couple of days. Right? So what you're actually saying is, if you actually believe the modelling, that there could be up to 26 billion cases of Omicron in this country by New Year. Right, mate. Because all the modelling that you put forward at Sage... All that modelling that you scared the living bejesus out of people these past freaking two years. Name me freaking one. Name me one of these freaking models that have actually worked. Anyway. But again, I, try, I digress. What is affecting us, okay, is that some of the shops, businesses, hotels, etc., Pubs, clubs, cafes, restaurants, bars, cinemas, gyms, the whole freaking lot of them, okay, are now flapping like the proverbial proverbial dick in a shirt sleeve over over where their next sort of pay is coming from. Some of the, the they don't know how many people to put on staff. They don't want to put too many on uh, on too many staff in because they don't know that they can actually justify the spends of people coming through the door to be able to pay those wages. And I mentioned before, VAT is due at the end of January. Uh, sorry, at the beginning of January. So, you know, it's crackers. It's absolutely crackers. I, I, I'm intrigued, and I, and I, and I, and I don't swing one way or the other in terms of, you know, I'd be intrigued to hear your thoughts on what the hell is going on in this country. Um, you know, are you for these measures? Are you against these measures? Are you, do you not know which way is up or down? I'm gen I'd be genuinely interested to hear this. And again, I I'm not making an enemy of, of, of people that think different to me. I am not in any way trying to belittle or berate people that, that, that vote with the government or whatever, you know, um, based on how they, how they interpret the information given to them. 
I, I'm not trying to make enemies, right? But this madness has to stop. Anyway, keep on keeping on, boys and girls. And with any luck, some of you will still have freaking businesses in the new year. All the very best.